I forgot to do this season two for the end of I forgot to do the season two histories and lore for the end of season two. So I've already seen the first eight minutes of this, you know, with Dave was talking about the whole starving thing and eating rats and dogs and cats and bats and you know all that. So let's get right into it. Marjorie Terrell, Robert's Rebellion. Okay, interesting. Mother Marjorie. Some great houses call us upstarts. But the truth is that while the Starks and Lannisters fell to the Targaryens in defeat, House Tyrell rose. For thousands of years, our family served as loyal stewards to the Kings of the Reach, until the last of their line unwisely burned to death, resisting the Targaryen invaders. To save the Reach from a similar fate, we yielded the castle of Highgarden to Aegon and his sisters. In gratitude, the Targaryens gave House Tyrell dominion over the Reach. Right. And we became lords of the castle in which, for generations, we had served. Right, okay, so they were serving the High Gardens, but once, you know, in the Field of Fire, when the last High Garden fell, you know, there was no more High Garden. And then, you know, the Tyrells bowed down, now the Tyrells are the lords, Under gotcha. the Targaryen dynasty, Westeros prospered. Gone were the petty wars of seven kingdoms and the endless thirst for minor glories that drove them. The Westerlands enriched the realm. The North guarded it. And the Reach and Riverlands fed it. Okay. This harmony is what Robert Baratheon shattered with his rebellion against Ares Targaryen. Mm. When the call to arms came, though, we did not want to answer. The Reach is a gentle land, and honestly, the Mad King was not much loved. But we owed peace and status to his family. My father, Mace Tyrell, called his banners and marched north to battle the rogue Stormlord Robert. You got who had already defeated three forces in a single day. Golly. And God, Ashford, he was strong. My father won. Oh. Some chastened my father for not pursuing Robert after the battle. We had cut him off from the Stormlands, the seat of his power. And he had fled north. Okay. Within easy grasp of Lord Tywin Lannister, the hand of Ares for twenty years. My father moved instead to lay siege to Robert's ancestral stronghold of Storm's End. The rose would strangle the stag as right. the lion pounced. So right. we waited. But the lion slumbered and Robert slipped past the king's mm -hmm. forces to mm -hmm. join Ned Stark. We could have lifted the siege and deployed our armies north to aid the crown. We could have stormed the walls of the castle and made Robert homeless. But we had ample supplies, control of land and sea, and most of all, patience. Our siege would succeed, eventually, at little cost of life to us. If Robert prolonged the war with minor victories, our capture of Storm's End would hasten his downfall. And if Robert won the war, well, it would not do for him to find us in his halls with the bodies of his brother Stannis and his sworn men. Oh, that's genius when the strategy. When finally strategy. showed his colors and purged King's Landing, we knew our cause was lost. My father chose the peaceful route and bent the knee to Robert who heartily pardoned us. Strange, considering how we'd beaten him and starved his brother to the brink of death. We were to keep our lands, castle and title, but we knew that we would never be welcome at court. It didn't matter. The Reach was still the most fertile of the Seven Kingdoms and under our hand. Every flower, even the rose, needs pruning. Then it grows strong. Interesting. Okay, Terrell's really played that. Okay. They definitely feel like the Family. more strategic type of duty. Honor. Place. Every Tully child learns our words, but I was a woman before I understood them. Years before my father uh -huh. had taken before I. Every Tully child learns our words, but I was a woman before I understood them. Wait, did she say? 
Family. Oh. Duty. Honor. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Every Tully child learns our words. But I was a I think I wrote that down too. I understood them. Years before, my father had taken to foster the son of a wartime friend, a minor lord on the fingers. The boy had arrived at our castle as Peter Baelish. Due to his home and size, okay. my brother soon named him Littlefinger. When I came of age, Brandon Stark of Winterfell sought and won my hand. To my father, Brandon was heir to the North and a suitable match for a daughter of House Tully. Okay. To me, Brandon was wild and terrifying, never far from laughter or trouble. Hmm. I loved him with all the fire of a first passion. Much I came to realize as Peter loved me. Hmm. When Peter heard of my engagement, he challenged Brandon to right. a duel. Got Peter bodied. only because I begged Brandon not to kill him. That's crazy. Still thought of Peter as family. Look at him laughing. He ah, uh, that I changes the man. Let him die. Only days before my wow. wedding, when I thought to be happy forever, Prince Rhaegar Targaryen abducted Brandon's sister. Okay. Lyanna. Hot blooded as always, Brandon immediately rode for King's Landing to demand justice, which the Mad King Aerys Targaryen gave him, in his own twisted fashion. The day the Raven arrived with the news of my Brandon's death, I locked myself in a room and refused to eat for days. Until my father reminded me of my duty. I was to marry Eddard, Brandon's younger brother. A man whom what I you had got never to say met, though of whom none spoke ill. Okay. Spoke yeah, people love him. At all. Damn, they didn't give a fuck about him. Our union would cement an alliance of the North, Vale, Stormlands, and Riverlands in rebellion against the Mad King. I was a Tully. I did my duty. We were married quickly and were spared only one night before he had to return to the field. Mm. I spent the war by the windows waiting for a raven to hear if my son would grow up fatherless or at all. We knew the price of defeat. I scoured the kitchens and washing rooms for any and all gossip. Robert had won and crushed the Mad King. Robert had lost, but Jamie Lannister was now king. Huh. Robert had almost won, but the Mad King had become a dragon and burned King's Landing to ash. <sighs> she drove herself crazy. I told myself the war would end soon and bring peace. Either a victory or the grave. I was wrong. Robert won, and my husband avenged his brother and my love. But when he came home to me, he could not meet my eyes. I saw the reason by his side. Many men have bastards, I know. And under the strain of war, any man, no matter how honorable, may forsake his vows for a night of warmth that he may never know again. But Ned Stark was not built like other men. His northern honor would not let him sequester his shame in some distant holdfast. He brought this boy, this Jon Snow, home to raise with his true-born children. Huh. My children. Yet even these bitter memories are sweet now. They are all I have left of my Ned. Yeah. Our family is broken and scattered. Facts. And our son must wait. You in jail and shit? Pieces. We need to go home. The Starks are of the north, and like the snows of winter when they come south, they melt away. Hmm. Wow. Damn. What a way to put it. Oh, that's fire. Oh, the Greyjoy Rebellion. Oh, I'm trying to hear about that now. Okay, okay, okay. I don't think I'm learning anything so far that's I'm learning so far I feel like I've learned a lot about the Tyrells and kind of how they see things dark wings dark words I was only a boy when the raven came to call my father Lord Eddard Stark to another war Balon Greyjoy had raised the Iron Islands in revolt and burned the Lannister fleet at anchor King Robert Baratheon again needed his old friend. One more game, one more game. Dark wings, 
dark words. I was only a boy when the Raven came to call my father, Lord Eddard Stark, to another war. Balon Greyjoy had raised the Iron Islands in revolt and burned the Lannister fleet at anchor. King Robert Baratheon again needed his old friend. My mother Catelyn was not happy to lose her lord husband to Robert again. Mm -hmm. Six years before, yeah. he had left her to avenge his father and brother against the Mad King. Mm -hmm. But now he had sons and daughters of his own. And, unspoken, another son who wasn't hers from the last time he went to war. My brother, Jon Snow. But she knew that in marrying my father, she had married the North. <laughs> That's a honor and duty as dear as our old gods. When the time came, my father marched south to restore peace and order to the realm. My father always told me the Iron Islands were a strange and dangerous place. Its people, the Ironborn, keep neither the old gods nor the Seven, and oh. despise oh, yeah, yeah. all honest toil. Their ancestors ravaged the western shores, raping and slaving and putting it to the torch, and their songs still ring through the halls of the Ironborn, while everywhere else they are whispered to wayward children at bedtime. Perhaps Lord Balon thought Westeros had not healed from the war against the Mad King, and was as fragmented and suspicious as the ancient kingdoms his forebears had terrorized. Mm. Robert's navy corrected him at Fair Isle when they smashed the Proud Iron Fleet. Robert and my father corrected him at Pike, his own castle, when they pulled down his towers and breached his walls. My father never liked to speak of his battles. But from other men, I learned what transpired. Yeah. Thoros of Mir was first through the breach with his flaming sword. Not far behind That's him cool. was Jorah Mormont of Bear Island, my father's bannerman who earned the knighthood he would later shame, and lords from every corner of the Seven Kingdoms. All day, through every passage in the castle, they fought. Wait, hold on, hold on. Damn, like, slow it down, Rob. Shit, I feel like I'm, so I'm listening to Busta Rhymes. Damn. While everywhere else, they're whispered to wayward children at bedtime. Right, right. Perhaps Lord Balon entered and suspicious as the ancient Fair right. Isle when they spares had terrorized. Right. Robert's navy corrected him at Fair Isle when they smashed the Proud Iron Fleet. Smashed it. Robert and my father corrected him at Pike, his own castle, yep. when they pulled down his towers and pulled breached him down. his walls. Right. My father never liked to speak of his battles. Okay. But from other men, I learned what transpired. Thoros of Mir was first through the breach with his flaming sword. Not far behind him was Jorah Mormont of Bear Island, mm -hmm. my father's bannerman who earned the knighthood he would later shame, and lords from every corner of the Seven Kingdoms. All day, through every passage in the castle, they fought side by side. My father with our ancestral sword Ice, and King Robert with his war hammer against a horde of axe-wielding Ironborn. In the end... Okay, so... Ned Stark's sword is named Ice? That's fire. But, <laughs> no pun intended. Okay, so... The Greyjoys got stomped out by all the seven, bro? They didn't stand a chance. I'm over here thinking that it was like really just a north the thing that they stomped out. No. They didn't stand a chance. I'm over here thinking that they're like lame low key like they can't really fight like that. And Lord Balon bent the knee. They just couldn't. Man. King Robert generously allowed Lord Balon to retain his title and castle. I mean, but honestly, fuck them anyway. They over here ironborn if raping, pillaging, stealing, killing. Yeah, get outnumbered, bitch. The fuck? In the end, Lord Balon bent the knee. King Robert generously allowed Lord Balon to retain his title and castle. The price of peace was custom. The only son of Balon's to survive his foolish rebellion would be taken as a hostage against future treasons. My father even volunteered to foster the boy himself, I suspect, to make Theon Greyjoy a different man than his father, who would bring honor and duty to the Iron Islands when he returned as heir. Mm, wow. So my mother's silent fear came true, and my father returned with another child. <laughs> That's Theon hilarious. Played with us, played with us and fought with us. 
Once the great bond between my father and Robert Baratheon united the realm against the Mad King and brought him to justice for his crimes. Now, another monster sits on the Iron Throne and another debt of blood is owed my family. Theon is my murdered father's ward. I am my murdered father's son. Like my father and Robert, bound in blood, if not by blood, we are mm. brothers. That's a bar. God damn. Okay, talk about Theon from your point of view. Now that you are pissed about it. When Aegon and his dragons burned Harren the Black and all his sons at Harren Hall, the days when men feared the sight of our long ships were over. Aegon would not permit marauders and raiders in his seven kingdoms. Hmm. With Harren died our empire and the old way that forged it. But what is dead may never die. Six years after Robert Baratheon won his crown, my father, Balon Greyjoy, sought to restore our ancient rights. He declared the Iron Islands independent and himself its king, and sent the Iron Fleet in a daring raid on Lannisport where they burned the Lannister ships at anchor, making us unchallenged in the Sunset Sea. This was the seed of our undoing. My <laughs> eldest brother, Roderick, led a frontal assault on Seaguard, a town built to protect the mainland from us. After ferocious fighting beneath the city walls, he was slain by Lord Jason Malister and his men defeated. By this time, Stannis Baratheon had brought Robert's fleet around Westeros and somehow managed to trap the Iron Fleet at Fair Isle, smashing it. Wow. Robert's victory was now all but assured. Okay, Stannis. It, we made him bleed for each island. Stannis Baratheon captured Great Wick, the largest of the Iron Islands, and Sir Barristan Selmy himself subdued Old Wick. Oh, wow. Robert and Lord Eddard Stark led the main assault against the island of Pike. They raised the town of Lordsport to the ground before. Damn, Robert hold on, y'all fuck. Jesus, slow it down. And his men oh my gosh. Time stands right. Their aisle, smashing it. Robert's victory was now all but assured. Right. Yet we made him bleed for each right, island. Right, 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 right. Stannis Baratheon captured Great Wick, the largest of the Iron Islands. Okay. And Sir Barristan Selmy himself subdued all. Sir Barristan and Stannis going crazy. Robert okay. And Lord Eddard Stark led the Let me put some respect on their on their name. You know. Let me put some respect on the their name. Island of Pike. They raised the town of Lordsport to the ground before Robert turned his full fury on our family stronghold. When they breached the walls, the first through was Thoros of Mere with his ridiculous flaming sword, followed by every minor lord of Westeros hungry for glory. My other brother Maron was killed when the siege engines brought down a tower on his head. Tail. I was now my father's only living son, an heir to the Iron Islands. When my father saw his cause was lost, he wisely conceded defeat to Robert, who otherwise would have pulled down our castle stone by stone with us in it. As my father said to me then, no man has ever died from bending his knee. He who kneels may rise again, blade in hand. Mm, yeah, he who true. not kneel stays dead, stiff legs and all. As it stands, Robert allowed my father to keep his lands and title as Lord of the Iron Islands, King of Salt and Rock, Son of the Sea Wind, Lord Reaper of Pike, for a price. His last son and heir shipped off to Winterfell as an honoured guest. I would eat at the Stark's table and play with the Stark children. And if my father rebelled again, Lord Eddard Stark would take his sword and cut off my head. Man. It would be I'm sure he wouldn't. Oh man, his duty. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't think he would. I don't think he would. Oh my gosh, go ahead, Stannis. Robert had risked all our lives to win it. The Iron Throne bored him. He cared little for justice and less for rule. If it weren't women or wine skin, he had no use for it. Without the stalwart John Arryn as hand of the king. The challenge to Robert's crown would have come much earlier than it did. The Iron Islands hmm. have never lacked for treachery. They respect only strength, and honor is as foreign to them as the Seven. After six hmm. years, their ruler, Lord Balon Greyjoy, wagered that King Robert had not won the support of the great houses of Westeros, many of whom still named him Usurper. Lord Balon declared the Iron Islands independent and sent his Iron Fleet to Lannisport. 
Lord Tywin Lannister was careless. And the Ironborn caught and burnt his ships at anchor. Lord Balon. Yeah, Tywin be losing it, man. Tywin don't know what he doing. He been losing everybody. He he losing battles to a 17-year-old kid. I don't know if he's still said he's like 18, right? Or something. I don't know. Anyway. Appreciate you, Stannis. Stannis is speaking in a tone and in a way where I I can keep up. Appreciate you. And his reavers controlled the Sunset Sea. Robert then ordered me to succeed where his father-in-law, Lord Tywin, had failed. Hmm. Beneath Robert's fury, I sensed relief. War he could understand. Hmm. He would smash Lord Balon as he had Rhaegar. I raised Robert's fleet and sailed around Westeros to the Iron Islands. I set a trap for the Iron Fleet off Fair Isle. Okay, as sailors and warriors, the Ironborn are unparalleled. But they're not okay. soldiers. They have no discipline, okay. no strategy, okay. no unity. In a battle, each man fights only for his own glory. And mm. their longships are built for lightning strikes and shore raids. When the captains rushed in, I smashed their longships with our larger war galleys. The strength of the Ironborn is in their ships. With the Iron Fleet broken, I had assured Robert's victory. He could now transport troops and siege weapons to invade the Iron Islands. And contrary to Balon's hopes, Robert had plenty of both. I've never seen such allegiance as Robert could inspire in war. Enemies who tried to kill him one day would be drinking with him the next under their he, own fallen banners. He got the energy. In rebelling against the Iron Throne, Lord Balon did more than Robert ever could to cement his rule. When Robert came to the Iron Islands, he brought with him the full power of Westeros. Sir Barristan yeah. Selmy of the King's Guard led the assault on Old Wick, while I subdued Great Wick, the largest of the Iron Islands. But Robert saved the seat of House Greyjoy, Pike, for himself and Lord Eddard. Robert would later boast of the battle's bloodiness and how he could have torn down the island into the waves if Lord Balon hadn't bent the knee. But if I'd have led Man. the assault, Balon's neck would have bent under his sword. God because damn. I do not forget. I do not pardon. His time will come. All their times will come. Stand is a problem. Stand is a problem for real. He said his neck would have bent. <laughs> He's crazy, bro. But I will say that that whatever they were doing with the imagery there for Stannis, I, I liked his more. It was clean. House Terrell. All right, mother. Talk about it. House Terrell trace our descent to Garth Greenhand the legendary first king of the right. reach who made the land bloom mm -hmm. but so too does every noble house around us it seems dear ancestor garth planted as many yep. flowers as he Fucking planted. everybody a king should have more consideration for his line don't you think for over a thousand years the green hand sons and grandsons ruled the reach as house gardener the offshoots of his daughters grew into vast and powerful houses in their own right except for House Tyrell. We chose instead to serve our gardener cousins faithfully as stewards, to manage their stronghold of High Garden and the daily affairs of the Reach. Our words are growing strong. And under our stewardship, the Reach did just that, as did we. I like that. Until a blundering king almost cost us everything. Aegon Targaryen had landed in Westeros. King Myrne allied us with the Roth to repel the upstart's army. One can only marvel that King Myrne did not reconsider when he saw the living dragons against him. <laughs> Perhaps he should have sought counsel from his trusted stewards before he set out. Okay. Then again, perhaps he did. At the Field of Fire, Aegon. I don't. I, hold on. I don't get that. Stewards before he She's saying, damn, he should talk to us before he went he out. out. But maybe he did. Because the Tyrells are the stewards. Again, perhaps he did. Hmm. At the field of fire, Aegon, 
and let us not forget his sisters burnt the combined armies of the reach and rock king Mern i like that. that that little touch it let us not forget his sisters like let's not forget about the women i, I like how they uh she snuck that in paid for his misjudgment with his life and no, the way she snuck it in you know what i mean the reach and rock king Mern paid for his misjudgment with his life and that of his ancient family in a day the reach had lost its king its ruling house and most of its army thankfully for everyone my ancestor harlan terrell had better sense until the maesters sorted out the intel among Mern's cousins harlan the steward was acting lord of highgarden to ensure peace and life in the reach he would yield the castle to aegon the other castles and families wow. would then follow as they had since the dawn age aegon had a continent to conquer and the fertile reach was too valuable to raise he accepted Harlan's proposal and welcomed our lands into his kingdom. Aegon, to man. show his gratitude, did his thing. Aegon entitled Harlan to Highgarden, the castle his family had served for a thousand years, and made House Tyrell his wardens of the south, choosing us over older, greater families in the Reach. Our house thus owed everything to the Targaryens. So is it any wonder we stayed true to King Aerys? even during his madness and even after robert baratheon rebelled some may question mm. my father for laying siege to the baratheons I, I, don't, I don't like how much he uh i don't, I don't like how how positive she's speaking on the targaryens but i get some it i get where she comes from my father for sure for laying siege to the baratheon's home instead of marching to aid prince rhaegar before robert could kill him and scatter the royal army but let us not forget that we had already dealt robert his only defeat of the war at ashford mm -hmm. if lord tywin lannister had not vanquished the mad king so suddenly our siege would have destroyed robert's home and his brothers and won the war for Ares. But when the Targaryens fell, House Tyrell again chose peace and prosperity over war and devastation, and bent the knee to King Robert Baratheon, first of his name. We returned to Highgarden to manage the affairs of the Reach, as we had for thousands of years, and will for a thousand more. Other great houses take lions and wolves for their sigils and draw their power from the gold in their mountains or the cold of their winters. But mountains run dry. Winter yields to spring. And the rose blooms once more. Okay, okay. She, she proud of her house. She love her house. That's great. The Iron Grey Joan Yara. Okay. Where the North has its honor and the South its chivalry, the Iron Islands has its strength. We call ourselves the Ironborn, and we are warriors feared throughout the Seven Kingdoms. Or so we used to be. Right, like what are we the talking about? Mainland cousins, the first men of the Iron Islands never bowed to the old gods. Theirs was the Drowned God, who made the Ironborn to reeve and sack and write their names in salt, steel and song that his enemy, the Storm God, could not wash away. We raised our kings from our own ranks and used beaten foes as thralls to work our mines and farm our land. Or as salt wives, if a woman was pretty enough. Such was the old way, and while we followed it, we held sway wherever the waves were heard. When Aegon came to man okay. fealty, King Harren the Black ruled as far east as the Trident. Other kings like the Starks could kneel, but Harren was ironborn, and the ironborn must be beaten. In mm. Harren Hall, he had the mightiest castle in Westeros, and the army to Wait, what? Hold on, hold on. What do you. What? He came demanding fealty. King Harren the Black ruled as far east as the Trident. Other kings like the Starks could kneel, but Harren was ironborn, and the ironborn must be beaten. You talking about other kings can kneel, but the Ironborn, huh? What'd you say? Hold up. But Harren was Ironborn. Yeah, he was Ironborn. And the Ironborn must be beaten. They must be beaten. 
and he died, right? So, but your your own father kneeled. How you gonna talk shit about other kings kneeling when your own daddy did? What? In Harren Hall, he had the mightiest castle in Westeros, and the army to defend it. But Aegon did not intend a siege. He mounted his dragon and roasted Harren and all his sons in their tower, and the old way with them. Because of Harren's defiance, Aegon pushed the Ironborn back to our islands and gave the Riverlands to the Tullys. But he did allow the Ironborn to choose who would lead them. House Greyjoy had always been one of the greatest houses of the Iron Islands. We trace our descent from the Age of Heroes and the legendary Grey King, who took a mermaid to wife and made war upon Manatee. the Storm God for a thousand years. Blessed by the Drowned God, the Grey King fought and slew Naga, the Great Sea Dragon, and took her fire for his own. This history made our ancestor, Vicon Greyjoy, the natural choice to lead the Ironborn after Aegon's conquest. For 300 okay. years, House Greyjoy ruled the Ironborn. We styled ourselves Lord of the Iron Islands, King of Sultan Rock, Son of the Sea Wind, Lord Reaper of Pike. In truth, we were thralls. Our people still chanted, what is dead may never die. But the old way had died. Until Seems the like Targaryens it. followed their dragons into the grave. And our Lord Father, Balon Greyjoy, rose against the new king, Robert Baratheon. He seized our ancient crown and sent our iron fleet against the Lannisters at Lannisport, burning all their ships before any could weigh anchor. Though Robert and Eddard Stark would later defeat him, they understood us no better than Aegon. The Greyjoy sigil is the Kraken. What it grasps once, it will never surrender. What is dead may, may never die, die but, but rises, rises again. again. Harder and stronger. I think that's so. That's uh, so. Did they just remix "What Is Dead May Never Die"? Did they just got? Did they have an extended cut of the saying of their words? Because I thought it was just that, but maybe they just cut it short. Maybe it was always all that. Either way, it's a dumb saying. "What Is Dead May Never Die." Man, shut your stupid ass. Does that make sense to you? Like, nah. Let me stop. We styled ourselves Lord Reaper of Pike. In truth, we were thralls. Yeah, yeah, okay. Against the Lannisters at Lannisport, burning all their ships yep. before any could weigh anchor. Though Robert and Eddard Stark would later defeat him, they understood us no better than Aegon. The Greyjoy sigil is the Kraken. What okay. Die? Die. Whatever, bro. I think I like House Greyjoy the least, bro. Like, y'all just pillage. Y'all can't do nothing. Fish! Y'all out there in the sea, fish! Have have some crab boats out there, you know what I mean? Like, do something. Oh, my gosh. Y'all y'all over here. Oh, we, what we do is pillage. What you pillaging now? Nothing. You suck now. Like. It's, oh, they, they, they crusty. They're just crusty. Salt wives, bro. Crusty. Whatever. House Clegane. Oh, Lim Sandor Clegane is the hound. Honor, glory, lies I actually know kid. that. I don't know if they ever said that in the show, but it was when I was looking up the IMDB photos. It, it had his full name, Sandor. For the Glory. terrorist lies to make idiot boys want knighthood and idiot girls spread their legs for it God. let me tell you what makes a knight killing here he goes Either with killing men are the right man house clegane should know mm. we're very good at both most families claim some great ancestor so far back that nobody can prove them liars right that's what i i fuck with you undertaker like bro really Oh, 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 your ancestor, the great king, slayed the first sea dragon. Shut your... Like, oh my, the cloud is crazy. Not us. My grandfather kept the kennel for Lord Titus Lannister of Casterly Rock. The father of Lord Tywin. Wait, hold on, what? 
Most families claim some great ancestor so far back that nobody can prove them liars. Not us. My grandfather kept the kennel for Lord Titus Lannister of Castle Rock, the father of Lord Tywin. Lord Titus was a weak man who didn't know it. One day while hunting, he stumbled on a lioness. Instead of embracing the man who wore her on his banners, hmm. she tried to tear out his throat. Hmm. Makes sense. Lucky my grandfather came up with the dogs and drove the big cat away. As a reward, the Cleganes got lands and a keep and a son to squire for the Lannisters. We took the three hounds who died for them as our new sigil. Okay. When Tom oh, that's fire. Lannister became Lord of Casterly Rock, he wanted more from his former kennel master than fealty. He bet that training hounds to kill isn't far from training boys to kill. In just two generations, mm. my brother Gregor and I proved him right. Wow. I gutted my first man at 12. Years after, servants started disappearing in our keep. And even a sister I don't remember. But nobody could prove anything against Gregor. Wait, day, what? I gutted my first man at 12. Years after servants started disappearing in our keep and even a sister I don't remember but nobody could prove anything against Gregor or dared if they caught him at it for my father one oh Gregor oh great yeah yeah Gregor's insane and I over here put him in D tier didn't I I did put him in wait Actually, I, I do think I put him in F tier. I should put him in bitch tier. Oh my gosh. He's just killing people. With these I hate bullies. That, that's what gets me. I hate bullies. Like you, you use your strength in order. Well, I, I guess everyone in this world kind of does that. But the, the fact that he's getting away with all this because he's big is fucking crazy, bro. His own sister? And they over here turning a blind eye. They don't know. We don't got the evidence, your lord. Like, to the night my lord. Family and thought he'd found one in Gregor, who at 13 towered over a family. Dared if at 13? Sorry, go ahead. For my father wanted a knight in our family and thought he'd found one in Gregor, who at 13 towered over enough men that they called him the mountain. Wow. Sure, Gregor looks quite the champion from a distance. But a mountain can't cleave a man in half with one blow and won't break a wench's face if she talks. Through Lord Tywin's influence, Prince Rhaegar Targaryen kindly anointed my brother personally. A great honor for our family, everyone said. One year later, Sir Gregor chivalrously sacked the prince's city, brained the Holy prince's baby, shit. and raped and murdered the prince's wife, winning our family yet more Wow. Honor from the new king and queen. Wow, holy shit. Soon after, my father died. They say in a hunting accident. The, the, the hound is talking his shit right now, and I love it. The new king and queen. Like, he, he, he explained in this, he needs to do audible. Like, winning our family yet more honor. And I, I love how you could tell he don't fuck with it, you know? From the new king and queen. Soon after, my father died. They say in a hunting accident. The same day that Gregor became lord of the Clegane lands, gold and anything under his roof, I left our home to take service at Castle Rock. Lord Tywin is not like his father. Neither is King Joffrey. Or the likes of me would never be on the King's Guard with all those true knights. Between them, a man who serves the Lannisters will never lack for killing. I'll guard this king, such as he is. Gregor will kill the other ones, such as he does. When we're done, we'll see how many people still believe in songs and fairy tales. Interesting. So they both kill, but Gregor kills for power, or at least to get power for, you know, the people works for but whatever but it feels like the hound kills 
in order to protect, you know? Am I just pulling all this out of my ass? Probably. The free folk. Egret, talk about it. Sexy ass. A long time ago, they say, some old southern king enslaved our giants by magic and forced them to build your famous wall. Then he kicked all of my kind to the other side and raised an army to keep us there. And we're the uncivilized ones. Wildlings. Might be so king was wise. Even a giant can be made to kneel. But only if he wants a better crack at your head. Hmm. The free folk don't follow a man because his father tells us. If the king's son was brave and strong, aye, we'd follow him as we did his father. If he wasn't. But it seems to me, as much as the wall keeps us out, it keeps you southerners in. You follow laws you didn't make. Mm. Kneel to kings you didn't choose and pray to gods you never hear from. Our traders talk about your seven. Beyond the wall, the stars shine bright and clear. Any gods there aren't listening to the likes of men. Our gods are of the forest, in the trees that shelter us and the rivers that feed us. Mm. They gave the land for all of us to share. We fish, farm, and hunt where we will, when we need. If a man wants a woman, he has to prove he'll give her strong and cunning sons. It's easy. When she tries to slit his throat, he don't let her. <laughs> With the free folk, you get what you can take, and you keep what you can hold. No more. I wonder, even if my kind didn't hop over your wall, would he still set your night's watch to guard it? You southerners are rich. You always have more steel, gold, and daughters. I think you're afraid. If you've always knelt, you don't know what freedom is. And if you've not been beyond the wall, you don't know what fear is. Uh, she talking. You will. The fuck? Oh, right, because they can bring back animals too. Okay, so interesting. And I, I like how she calls everybody south of the wall southerners. Because Crestar also said, oh, uh, you're all southerners to me because you're on the other side of the wall. That's cool. Nice consistent consistency in the story. Also, was it, what was I about to say? It wasn't going to be important. I already know. Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't really expecting to hear about so a wild link's point darkness. of view and all that. But it's cool. Hi. The Black Brothers of the Night's Watch are that, at least. As too many of the free folk know. You southerners are strange. A man murders, and you train him to kill better. <laughs> a man thieves or rapes, and you send him where it's dark and private. Well, at least you make him promise to be good. Mm, she's then talking. You make him regret even that. From the time he's woken to the time he's allowed to sleep, he walks the frozen wall, carries frozen stones, or boils frozen food. When he lies down at night, he can't have nobody to warm his frozen bed. Well, not unless the crows like to nest together. Do you think he remembers the stories they told him then? About when the White Walkers woke in the land of always winter, and how the wall and the night's watch were raised to stop them the next time. Never mind trapping us on the other side. Mm, yeah, sure. We free folk have our stories too. About how one of your king crows found something cold in the woods with bright blue eyes. How he brought her home through your wall and declared himself Night's King. Thirteen years he and his queen ruled over his brothers, making sacrifices as black as their cloaks. Lucky for you, Southerners, the free folk rallied to a king beyond the wall, 
As we will when need be, and march on the ancient castle he'd taken for his own, the Night Fort. With the help of the Starks, we killed the demon and cleansed your precious watch. And then they thanked us and kicked us back across the wall, as you always have. Gandal, Raymond Redbeard, the Horned Lord, each chosen as a king beyond the wall, each promising victory. And all fall into the night's watch and the Starks. But this time is different. Our new king knows your tricks. You called him a brother crow once, but he never forgot his wings. We know how you think. We know where you're weak. Watch for us from your wall, if you like. With the cold, you won't even feel the blade slip into your back. There was so much, I'm gonna have to rewatch all of it. I'm probably gonna edit it out, but holy shit. We free folk have our stories too. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so this is where I started like, what? Oh my god. Okay, so... And all this is actually reminding me, where the fuck is Benjin? <laughs> I was expecting to see him at some point, motherfucker. I got you on the tier list. You better show up. Anyway. So I was right about the Night King. So this is the Night King, and he took the Night Queen. Okay, so hold on. What? Hold on. About how one of your king crows found something cold in the woods. So am I getting this right? The night, the night king, the night's king. If I, I I'm, I'm really at this point. I'm, I'm not sure if the white white walker i saw on the horse if he was the night king i'm pretty sure that's his name i'm almost positive that's his name but again i heard it years ago i know that's what he looked like i think that's his name so if that's the night's king so he was a crow and i was calling him the night king i guess he's the night's king which is a fire name with bright blue eyes how he brought her home through your wall and declared himself knight's king that's a fire name that's such a fire name not king not king in the north not king of the... knight's king that's so clean and he does have blue eyes so did he get Thirteen years, he and his queen ruled over his brothers, making sacrifices as black as their cloaks. Lucky for you, Southerners, the Free Folk rallied to a king beyond the wall, as we will when need be, and marched on the ancient castle he'd taken for his own, the Night Fort. Okay, so... They made sacrifices. With the help of the Starks, we killed the demon and cleansed your precious watch. Okay, so I'm confused. Because she said, bro, I shouldn't be sp spending this for fucking long. Through your wall. Yeah, okay, so he brought her through the wall and they were doing sacrifices. But the wildlings r rallied around a king beyond the wall in order to fight him at the knight's palace. With the help of the Starks, they defeated him. Defeated the knight queen chick. As we will when need be, and march on the ancient castle he'd taken for his own, the knight fort. Oh, the knight fort, not the knight's palace. With the help of the Starks, we killed the demon and cleansed your precious watch. And then they thanked us and kicked us back across the wall, as you always have. <sighs> okay. I think I get enough of it. Wall, each promising victory. Okay. 
And I'll fall into the night's watch and the starks. Okay, are the kings beyond the wall? Walls. Are the kings beyond the wall? Starks destroyed them. Right. Our new king knows right. your trick. Right, right, right. right. Dragonstone. Let's go. Damn, I spent a lot of time. Hey, hey great, you were messing me up, bro. Targaryens first came to the island of Dragonstone. Old Valyria was then at the height of its power and the center of the civilized world, which ended at the narrow sea. Westeros was a filthy backwater with seven kings squabbling over borders and minor glories. So much for progress. The island itself was and is nothing. It had no gold or gems to lure Valyrian nobility. All it has is rock. Mostly a shiny black stone, too brittle for war and too sharp for building. The oh, Targaryens obsidian. called it dragon glass. I call it useless. But the Targaryens managed to raise a castle here. Simpletons claim they used ancient Valyrian sorcery, forgetting that the Targaryens brought a small army with them from Essos. There's no magic in strong backs. Though admittedly, the castle is unlike any in Westeros. Foreign and strange. If the Targaryens ever regretted their barren outpost and longed for the comforts of home, the doom made their folly permanent. <laughs> Valyria collapsed into the waves and was no more. To look east was to see the ruin of their homeland, the greatest civilization before or since. But to look west, as Aegon realized, was to see a fertile land ripe for conquest. Perhaps even a new Valyria. Though good for little else, Dragonstone was the perfect staging point for Aegon's invasion of Westeros. The Blackwater Bay granted easy access to the continent. The lands there were disputed by three kingdoms. The Reach, the Iron Islands, and oh, the Stormlands. Wow. But their capitals were far enough away that none could mount a force before Aegon got a foothold. Even if their kings had been able to stop bickering over whose problem he was. Then it was too late. Aegon okay. had chosen his first camp well. With the bay to the east, the river to the south, and open fields to the north and west, his army would be impossible to take by surprise. A perfect site for an invasion, and one day, his capital city, King's Landing. The Doom had taught the Targaryens the wow. prudence of refuge. Oh my god, okay, that actually makes so much more sense in terms of where they were selling and where they ended up and just the battle with uh, Stannis and you know Tyrion and all them. Just the logistics of that battle now, like it, it actually makes so much sense. Dragonstone became the seat of the crown prince and heir to the Iron Throne. It would serve them well and me ill 300 years later after my brother Robert Baratheon rebelled against the Iron Throne and the Lannisters slaughtered the mad King Aerys and his royal family. Robert dispatched me to deal with the last surviving Targaryen children. But before I arrived, a loyal knight smuggled them across the narrow sea to safety. Hatred for the Targaryens blinded Robert. Unjustly, I was blamed and stripped of our family's castle of Storm's End and given Dragonstone in its stead. Okay. Over the years. I, I think I already knew that. In terms of like him failing uh, to kill the Targaryen children. I think I already knew about that. But I don't think I ever. I don't think I remembered that that was the reason why he really got that place and Storm's End, right? Or some shit. And why he got why Stannis got Dragonstone. I did, I did, yeah, it's because he failed to kill the Targaryen children. Years, whenever I demanded my rights restored, I probably Robert already knew that for that. me of the island's royal pedigree and pretend he was doing me honor. As if I were one of his tavern girls to be so easily deceived and dismissed. But Robert is dead. And I, Stannis Baratheon, 
am the rightful king of Westeros. They drew him like a superhero. Let the usurpers and traitors sit on the Iron Throne. From Dragonstone, I will be the dagger at their throat. Hmm. Hall. Talk to me, Calvin. On the shores of the God's Eye, due north of the Isle of Faces, rises a monument to arrogance and cruelty. Harrenhal. For a people who prided themselves on their ships, the Iron Men of old seized any chance to leave them, and carved out a vast kingdom from the peaceful river lords. The Empire reached its zenith under King Heron Hora, called the Black by those he terrorized, and by his own men, though they meant it proudly. Mm. King Heron enslaved the Riverlands to raise the mightiest fortress Westeros had ever seen. A castle that could garrison a million men, with walls so vast that winters would come and go, and besieging armies grow old and grey before the castle fell. Five Damn. towers he ordered. They built that shit. into the heavens like grasping fingers. A monstrosity. Oh, that's fire. Which he forced our people to build for their own subjugation. But the very day the slaves laid the last stone, Aegon Targaryen and his sisters arrived in the south. <laughs> when they arrived with Scorched. their small army, Heron laughed and shut the gates. Heron Hall would have its first test, and an easy one at that. It failed. <laughs> Heron Hall could have withstood an assault from all the armies in Westeros combined. But Heron learned that the tallest and thickest walls meant little to dragons. For dragons fly. With Heron and his sons dead, Heron Hall quickly surrendered to Aegon. House Tully then raised the River Lords in rebellion against the Iron Islands. And with Aegon, we flushed the Iron Men to the sea. We should have torn down the castle stone by stone then. But Heron Hall seemed such a magnificent prize that Aegon gave it to one of his commanders whose line then withered to extinction. Hmm. As would every family to hold it thereafter. Oh, well, is that why people call it cursed? When many speak of Harrenhal, their voices drop to whispers about Mad Lady Lothson, who was said to send a giant bat to collect children for her crockpots and to bathe in blood and serve feasts of human flesh. About the ghosts of Black Heron and his sons who still walk the castle at night all aflame. Of the servants who went to bed in full health and were found in the morning burnt to ash. Mere stories to uh -huh. frighten wayward children sure. and excite sure. young girls, you may say. You would not be entirely wrong. Right. Heron Hall is a prize. A nigh impregnable castle with enough land and enough income to make a man at a stroke one of the greatest lords in Westeros. But you would not be entirely right either. Say by a king's grace, Harrenhal became yours. Now you must garrison it. You must repair it and maintain it. Even stretched to the ends of your means, you cannot fill and manage the whole castle. So you will treat your household to four of the five towers, then three, then two, then only the bottom thirds of those. You close the hall of a hundred hearths and take your meals in your rooms. Even then you can't shake the feeling of desolation, that Harrenhal and its vastness is devouring you. <laughs> in later years, as you bury a grandson or a great-grandson, the last of your line, you will know it has. Wow. God damn. Ugh. Alright, Baelish, good luck with that. Three cities. At its height, the Valyrian Freehold ruled over half the known world. Yeah. Not bad for former shepherds. I get the it, they imploded. Them and sank their capital into the sea. Mm -hmm. Now Volantis is the ember of old Valyria, ensuring its flame does not go out from this world. As any Volantis. Fuck, who's from Volantis? Is it Talissa or Shea? It's Talissa. It's Talissa. Ensuring its flame does not go out from this world, as any Volantine will tell you. 
and Toshi say the same about Pentos, Lysines about Lys, and so on. But after enough time in the nine free cities, it's hard to see them as anything but ashes of glory. Volantis is the oldest, the first colony of Valyria. After the doom, the Volantines tried to rebuild the empire under their rule. They failed. Not least because the last Valyrian with dragons, Aegon Targaryen, entered the war against them. Now Wait, no, it's it's Shay. It's Shay from Valantis. Oh my, are y'all really about to have me? Oh, I'm not even listening because I'm over here thinking like, am I tripping? Uh, y'all really about to have me look at the notes. My, oh, y'all got me fucked up. Okay, Shay is from Lorath. Lorath. So it is to listen. That's okay. Gotcha, gotcha. After the doom, the Volantines tried to rebuild the empire under their rule. They failed. Not least because the last Valyrian with dragons, Aegon Targaryen, entered the war against them. Now they are content to dominate only their lower classes. Or so they yeah. say. Bravos is the strangest, a city erected not by the freehold, but against it. A labyrinth of illusion and deceit I did not Where is Bra Bravos? I think Jorah has talked about Bravos. I think it's across the narrow sea where Ashai and them are, or Karth and them are. By the freehold, but against it. A labyrinth of illusion and deceit to hide the refugees from Valyria's slave lords. After the doom, the city emerged from the shadows to become one of the greatest banking centers in the world. A man can get anything in Bravos for a price. Especially death. Your own if you offend one of the swaggering swordsmen that pollute the city. Or if you're very rich or very desperate. Anyone else's. <laughs> Lys is the easiest of the free cities, full of pleasure houses catering to every taste, no matter how peculiar. Many men lose themselves in Lys and are never found, at least alive. When a man runs out of coin, the Lysines may grant him their other speciality on the house, poison. Oh, what the fuck? Pentos is the most ruthless. The Magisters make a great show of choosing the Prince of Pentos from the great families and granting him the powers of trade, justice, and war, as long as he checks with them first. On the new year, to bring good fortune to Pentos, this prince must deflower the Maid of the Field and the Maid of the Seas. I confess I don't know how each is chosen or what becomes of them after serving their purpose. But if a crop should fail or a war be lost, the Magisters will slit the prince's throat and choose another. Oh. The other free cities are known for what they make. Okay. Mia has its lenses and finery. Norvos, its axes. Quohol, its smiths who can reforge Valyrian steel. Tyrosh, its colors. I'm sure hmm. Lorath had something to the world, but I can't think of it. Frankly. Oh, wow. So, hold on. Like Tyrosh, its colors? I'm sure Lorath had something to the world, but I can't think of it. Frankly, oh, the nine of them is... are more alike than they would care to admit. They hire Mysterious. The same, frankly, the nine of them are more alike than they would care to admit. They hire the same soldiers to fight the same wars for the same rulers, the rich. Be they called Magisters, Archons, or what have you. When a Dothraki Kalasar approaches, they gift the same tribute to avoid the same sacking. For thousands of years, the disgraced of Westeros have drained east to pool in the free cities, where a man of honor counts for less than nothing, unless it raises his price. Better men than I have learned that what a man sells for gold, he can never buy back. He must earn it by fire and blood. Zoro Zoen Daxos. Shaq. Karth has always and only belonged to the Karthine. We were never part of Valeria's empire, nor have we ever fallen to a Dothraki horde. Our walls and the red waste outside them guard us from such annoyance. Many call the approach to our city the Garden of Bones. It needs little tending to grow. 
Our city, however, would be quite a That's what it means? For any empire. Wait, well, hold on. What? From such annoyance. Many call the approach to our city the Garden of Bones. It needs little tending to grow. Uh, our city, however, would be. He said it needs. I thought he said it means like it emits something that it. Fuck it. Prize for any empire. Karth straddles two worlds a greedy and curious West and a rich and mysterious East. The marvels of Yeti and Ashai pass through our markets and share births with the riches of the free cities and Westeros. Our ports have fulfilled many a trader's dreams, almost as many as they have broken. We call Karth the greatest city that ever was or will be, an easy claim to make if one knows only the docks and customs houses of other cities. <laughs> An easy lie to swallow if a people see only the gold and jewels of their rulers, which we, the 13 who govern the city, are careful to ensure. The proud Carthine shook off the yoke of unjust kings long ago, so they are told at festivals by the pureborn, the king's direct descendants who have controlled the 13 ever since. Only now, instead of scepters, they use ships. A merchant only remains on the 13 until the others are no longer afraid to deny him, or <laughs> too afraid to deny his replacement. Except for the warlocks, they alone hold a hereditary seat. Oh, wow. Apart from when they had powers, or at least from when the world was younger and more easily duped. Over the years, we have developed an understanding with them. They shall always be welcome on our councils and at affairs of state. Ooh, blue lips. Why they never come? Huh. Rare is the civic problem that can be solved by cryptic nonsense and shade of the evening. Thankfully, they need little encouragement to confine themselves to their house of the undying. Yet perhaps we, Carthena, too, confined ourselves. We feel safe behind our walls and our laws, which no visitor can hope to follow, and by which any citizen who vouches for a guest always pays with his life. But like a ship in the summer seas, a city grows becalmed without fresh wind. The greatest city that ever was or will be? An epitaph. I would prefer the greatest city that is. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about the drowned guy. Well, I mean, do I really need to hear about the Great King? Don't we know enough? The seven are gods of weakness. Wait, or am I tripping? Pretty the Great King is the drowned god, right? Chains that the first men or kindly no. put on after the Andals crushed them, except in the Iron Islands. Since the Dawn Age, the Ironborn have followed the drowned god, who plucked fire from the sea and made us to okay. weave and sack and carve our names in blood and song. When the Andals landed on the Iron Islands, they found a god who was father, warrior, and stranger, who took mother, maiden, and crone when he would, and held the smith in thrall. His priests are the drowned men, who are clothed and armed by the sea itself. They consecrate us to the drowned god through our most sacred rite, the drowning and ask the god to raise us from the sea as he was, harder and stronger. The Ironborn do not fear the bloodiest battles or the roughest waves, for the drowned god taught us long ago that what is dead may never die. When an Ironborn falls, we say the drowned god needed a strong oarsman and took him below to feast in the god's watery halls, attended oh, by mermaids. But even That's in death, cool. an Ironborn is a warrior. We fight against the Storm God, who holds a castle in the clouds, and sends the winds to lure the Ironborn off course or wreck our ships. Wow. It's okay. said my legendary ancestor, the Grey King, waged war upon the Storm God for a thousand years. With the Drowned God's help, he slew the great sea dragon Naga and used her bones for his hall. After his death, the Storm God tried to wash away any memory of this terrible foe but his songs fill our halls to this day it was the storm so God when they say what is dead may never die are they referring to the fact that their drowned god still kind of lives on in a way through them or like 
yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Sorry, I'm like, I am. I I only got like three hours of sleep. I'm trying to stay focused and locked in, but it ain't it ain't working out. To subdue us and turn us from our faith. True, they conquered and killed our king, but in time they forsook their septs for the shore, and their fat septons for the drowned men. The Andals came to us as conquerors. In the end, they drowned. The Ironborn are of the sea, as our god made us, and given to it as our god taught us. We do not fear the storm god's winds or his waves, but you should, for they bring us to you. Ah, uh, here we go. How? Oh, yeah, that guy. Okay. I didn't know his name was Helen. Dragons Does he matter? the seven kingdoms, but to rule them, the Targaryens needed a less uh, temperamental tool. When the great King Magor saw the power of the Alchemist Guild, he blessed us with his patronage. In those days, we commonly transmuted metals and other wonders, but the king was most interested in our mastery of the substance, which those not of our order dub wildfire. Mm. A slight misnomer. To the uninitiated, the substance indeed seems uncontrollable. Water will not extinguish it, nor plate of steel repel it. Our order alone knows its secrets. In bare stone cells beneath the guild hall, our acolytes prepare the substance with utmost care and ancient magic. Apprentices then remove the jars to a secure storage. Overseeing its purity are the wisdoms, such as myself, who are adept in the alchemical mysteries. It's purity, Should like ain't cocaine. What are the we? Alchemical mysteries. Should an acolyte prove unworthy and allow the substance to ignite, the ceilings are spelled to collapse and fill the room with sand. Okay. For once lit, only smothering or starvation will quench the fire. That's great. Many years did the alchemist guild cool. serve the Targaryens faithfully until we were beset on all sides by the envious, the order of maesters, who dismissed all learning but their own, mm. and the charlatans who hucked green paint and worse in our names. After the unfortunate Prince Arian Targaryen, drunk with wine, boasted that a draught of the substance would transmute him into a dragon, we lost our royal favor. Then came the wise King Ares, second of his name. I was merely an acolyte when he restored our guild to its former glory. As had his great forefathers, he appreciated our secret arts, even naming Wisdom Rossart as Hand of the King. Together, they punished his enemies wow. as befits a true Targaryen. During the war of the usurper, I heard whispers that King Ares had engaged our greatest wisdoms for an ultimate weapon against his foe. But sadly, King's Landing must have fallen before it could be used, and many okay. of our wisdoms disappeared in the sack of the city. Victims of ignorance and envy, as ever, I'd wager. Yet our order perseveres, like the substance which grows ever more potent as it ages. <clears throat> we perfect our ancient arts in darkness, right. forgotten by the world. We are masters of the fire, uh. but we live only to serve. All we need is the right um, spark. Uh, nice. The Warlocks, Zarzon Daxos. The East is plagued with mystics who claim many dread powers but prove only one. Separating the foolish from their purses. Not so. I like how he talks like, oh yeah, these Warlocks, so full of shit. Meanwhile, you had a whole vault that was empty. 
like he which is genius by the way he tricked people into thinking he was the richest man in Karth just because they assumed because his vault was impenetrable and, oh just like Vera said the person who holds all the power is the person that you think holds all the power oh man that's crazy renowned warlocks of Karth they demand a much dearer coin in return for their parlor tricks. Respect. Once, the warlocks truly were mighty, or so they would have us believe. Oh my gosh. I do not doubt they have many secrets. They are an old order, and one does not obtain a seat on the 13, the governing council of Karth, without making 12 of our most powerful citizens afraid to forbid it. <laughs> Thankfully for Karth, the warlocks exert little influence in our politics. They rarely leave the confines of the House of the Undying, a pompous name, but I admit, a strange and dark tower. It is said that none who enter ever leave. Of course, since there are no visible doors, I have to believe none ever. Hold on now. A strange and dark tower. Gosh. It is said that none who enter ever leave. Of course, since there are no visible doors, I have to believe none ever enter either. We can only imagine what the warlocks do inside. I wager we do not have to imagine much. They read dusty scrolls detailing their lost glory. They sip shade of the evening, a foul concoction brewed from the nearby trees until their lips turn blue, the better to frighten children and the ignorant. Stewing in their fantasies like an, an old soldier who drinks alone so no one may challenge their prowess. Whatever the warlocks may wish, their magic, like all magic, is dead in the world, if it ever existed. Though, one does hear strange whispers of late. Glass candles that have been cold for a hundred years, now burning. Ghost grass, found far from the lands of the shadow. A kalasar led by a woman with three heads. Sure. Traders nonsense, most likely. But should the warlock's vaunted magic ever return, that would be a dangerous day for Karth. I shall need to keep my eyes on them. Indeed. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. I'm cool with that. That was cool. I, I don't I don't know if I... Uh, well... I, I did learn quite a bit. I did learn quite a bit. I enjoyed that, especially with the whole Greyjoy Rebellion. The and uh the Knights King. Kidding me? Okay, yeah, that that was that one there was a lot there. There was a lot there. I didn't talk much, but you know. I am exhausted. <laughs> that and uh I'm just really trying to like Catch it. They just talking and talking information. Like, golly. It's a good thing I take notes when I edit. Because otherwise, holy crap, bro. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. Keep your head up. Peace. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I fear. No evil, because I'm blind to it all.